What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, of course, to get things out of the way first, you know, we have a pretty large hurricane coming towards us. It's a Cat 5 right now. It's expected to be a Cat 3 uh, at landfall. Still, that is um, nothing you know, to bat an eye at. Uh, if you were in the area, obviously, we just dealt with some things with Helene. Um, definitely make sure you're taking proper precautions, right? I know we have uh, some tigers out there living in Sarasota, some of the Tampa Bay area. Um, I was looking at AP right now. They have a possible 8 to 12 foot storm surge in Tampa Bay. Obviously, flash flooding, river flooding. If you live in St. Pete, we saw the flash flood uh, we had here a few weeks ago. Uh, this is serious business. And this is coming from someone who is a lifelong Floridian. I have done Florida man things in hurricanes before, and this one uh, definitely is something we should take uh, precautions with. So I hope you all are doing so. Um, and if you needed to evac, that you did, and we're wishing you all luck here with it. Uh, let's take a look what the market's going, what, what it has right now. So, you know, yet on Friday, essentially, you had a little bit of a weird divergence with how the dollar and the equities were working. DXY is still pretty strong up on Friday. <clears throat> Excuse me, the indices were moving up as well. Uh, usually what happens when the dollar goes higher, you get some of the uh, selling pressure in the indices, especially when you have such a rapid movement uh, like we saw in the dollar. It must have just been somewhat of a lag on it. The DXY... Uh, kind of flat just right now as it is, but we're trading at 102.55. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial is off about 1.06%. The composite itself is off about the same, trading uh, below that 18,000 level that we closed at on Friday. Uh, and then obviously some of the big news, of course, is crude oil. You're also getting a switch in a lot of these larger traders. Um, on Wall Street no longer being short, uh, but potentially going long. Uh, in crude, there was a lot of short out on crude, which is probably explains why there was such a, an attempt to try to get it a little bit lower here. Um, but with things heating up really in the Levant, and they, they certainly are heating up, um, you could probably see this get pushed uh, a little bit higher as well as it stands. You know, I, I, I think in the past, you've, you've had a lot of you know, vitriolic comments, uh, obviously between these two powers, um, but I think it's a little bit weird with, with Biden saying, listen, we don't really control Israel. We don't you know, determine what they do or anything like that. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, there was a rocket that was launched into Tel Aviv uh, today. Uh, this, of course, is the anniversary of the attack uh, last year. So um, we'll see what happens with that. If Israel decides to strike and they said that um, they maintain the right to do it on our time, so on, uh, obviously this can go a lot higher. Speaking a little bit about that on Friday, you have the E-mini off about 0.9%. You have that gold contract trading off 0.27%. Still, we're relatively high, obviously off the top of 2,708. Um, but at least on the domestic market, buying actual gold, Costco is selling out of it very quickly. We're waiting for China to kind of wake back up, uh, get this supposed stimulus that they'll be having. Um, and I want to say as well, if you're looking at investing in some Chinese companies, I mean, I'm sure there will probably be you know, some large pumps in it, but just be, uh, you know, cautious and understand that you're investing in a country that doesn't operate the same way uh, as America does. Uh, and that can be good in circumstances like this, but it can also be negative in uh, other circumstances. You have uh, copper trading off about 0.61%, trading at 450. Uh, obviously went over the composite, but the NQs are off about 1.13%, and the Russell uh, is now down as well at 1.2%. Uh, 2% silver trading off 1.52 at uh, 31.90. Yeah, and essentially some of the stronger economic data that was coming out is kind of suggesting that we're not going to get these massive uh, rate cuts by the end of the year, as people were saying. Um, so I could see some issues with the Russell off that, and then it could sign, honestly, some sell off as well because of it, uh, at least in the indices. Uh, let's see, Apple is off today. We'll talk a little bit about what happened with them. Um, I was looking at Lucid. They actually did all right, up about 2.4%. This is an interesting stock. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of the, the company itself. Obviously, I'm like a Rivian bro, but Lucid did well, at least with some of their deliveries. Um, and it's so nice at this kind of level that you can get such small price movements and get, and get really huge percentage gain uh, with it as well. And then uh, Steel Dynamics up about 1.24%, so on the upper trading range course on some lower volume which can kind of indicate that we might be coming back down at some point soon here most likely going to test the 125 or 120 area uh, as this kind of stock usually behaves and then tesla off about 3.19 percent ahead of that robo taxi uh, discussion i want to look at hymns real quick because we were discussing that 
uh, the other day, semaglutide uh, was taken off the, excuse me, trapezotide, I believe it was. Trapezotide was taken off, this is Eli Lilly's, uh, off the FDA restriction list, or excuse me, um, uh, supply issue list. Uh, this sold off, but Hims wasn't making uh, trapezotide drugs, compounding trapezotide. They're doing semaglutide. I was saying at this moment, I actually did add some to my portfolio uh, at this time, and um, I'm out of it now. But my point was, is like this was such a massive dip on news, in my opinion, that wasn't really accurate because the drug that they were compounding was still on the short list. They were able to compound it still. Um, even going forward with some kind of loss of being able to compound it in a broad sense, uh, they're still maintaining the right and there is legal precedent uh, for them to continue compounding these GLP-1 drugs as long as they are personalized uh, to an individual. I think the market kind of sensed that as well. We're trading up about 10.67% today at 1945. So it's always important to look, uh, especially when you get some massive dumps on news like that, just make sure that the market is responding to accurate information. I don't believe they necessarily were um, on Thursday when we went over this. All right, let's talk a little bit about Apple and what's happening with them today. This is something we were also bringing up last week when I was filling in uh, for Tom. Obviously, they're, they had some issues with uh, selling units, and one of the things that I was saying, that it could have been a driver for them, but it didn't seem like it was fully fleshed out yet was uh, essentially AI capabilities, right? You saw a huge bump in uh, consumer electronic companies with the addition of AI uh, on laptops using Snapdragon. And I think some people were anticipating that to be the case with Apple phones as well, uh, but it looks like it really isn't. And you actually did uh, have an analyst from Jeffrey say, again, that the serious AI on smartphones is about two years away. And so that downgrade um, is kind of what's affecting this a little bit. I mean, we're only off about 1.84% right now, still trading at 222, uh, still obviously an extremely dominant company. And when this does get fleshed out, um, obviously you're gonna get some massive movement uh, in Apple. But they said essentially near-term expectations uh, for iPhone 16 and 17 are too high, and this is kind of resulting in just a little bit of volatility to the downside today. Folks, uh, stay right there. We'll be right back with Steve Rhodes. Bye.